Hi there, thanks for stopping in. In this episode of Pauline and the Three Sisters, we will be making a dish our ancestors really enjoyed, fried lake trout. Pauline is already in the kitchen and ready to show you what she's preparing for me. Oh boy, I can't wait to taste it. Hello, my name is Pauline Cotter. Today we're gonna to be making a pan fried lake trout with a lemon butter herb sauce. We're gonna start by cutting up our garlic and our herbs. We're gonna mince our garlic, so we're just gonna take our knife, crush it a bit. Crushing your garlic kind of releases some of the flavors and its natural oils. We're just gonna peel its skin off. Most of the indigenous stuff that I was shown was either modernized or it was always like a learning curve from each ingredient and learning how to pair them with each other and use them together. So once your garlic is nice and minced and chopped up, we're gonna add a little bit of salt, some coarse salt to it. Cause we're gonna kind of mince it into a paste. Adding your salt kind of helps it break it down. So you're gonna use the blade of your knife and you're gonna drag it across the garlic. And this will help it become a paste. So doing this with your garlic helps bring out its natural oils as well as bringing out more of its natural flavor. So now that we have our garlic minced, we're gonna go on and chop up some of our herbs. So today we're using parsley, some Italian parsley. I'm sorry to interrupt, but those herbs look really fresh. Are you buying them from local farmers? I try my best. I usually go to the farmer's market in Ridgeway every Saturday. Um, my mom and I will go and we'll, we'll get some fresh vegetables for the week and look at the different kind of things that they have there. We'll walk around. Sadly, with COVID, things are a lot different. We can't spend as much time as we used to there. We're gonna use our parsley for our lemon butter herb sauce today for our, our trout. We're just gonna chop it up. Now we're gonna chop up some thyme to add to our parsley for our sauce. So we're just gonna take it off its stem. So now that our herbs are prepped, we're gonna prep our lemon. We're gonna cut it in half, we're gonna juice it. I'm just taking the seeds out of the juice. So before we fry the fish, we are gonna season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Just enough to taste, just wanna enhance the flavor a little bit. So now that our fish is prepped, we're gonna head over to the stove and we're gonna fry it. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of oil to our pan, of olive oil. Just gonna let that heat up a bit. We're gonna move it around. So now that our pan's hot, we're gonna go in and put our fish in flush side down. Cause when you when you're cooking, you wanna cut cook your best side first. So your presentation side goes down into the pan first. That and so that the skin doesn't curl up. Because when you cook the skin tight, it tends to curl. Today we're cooking fish because it was one of the main foods that our, in our indigenous people used to eat. It was so easy to catch and easy to keep. Um, it was one of our main diet items. While you're cooking your fish, you're gonna notice that it's gonna start getting flaky. And it's got a nice brown sear to the top of it. You're only gonna cook each side for about three to four or five minutes on medium high heat. 
once it's been cooked on the skin side for about four minutes, you're gonna put a lid on it, turn the heat off, and let it sit for about five to 10 minutes. Corn, beans, and squash. It was That was one learning curve together because of the yeah, three sisters. Yeah, yeah. So learning about corn and learning about how our ancestors grew them mm -hmm. um, and then taught settlers how to grow them um, and just how we use them in general and how that they were such an important part of our diet because we could grow them. Anything that we could grow was such a big, important part of our diet. And anything that, like, that came from the land is what we lived off of. And getting back to the land is what the Fort Erie Native Friendship Center is planning to do. Just like the year 2020, the Three Sisters Garden seems to be running into some problems. Carl has been tending to corn steadily. However, Mother Nature has been creating some challenges. Gary Parker from the Seneca Nation shares a traditional approach to gardening as we check in to see how things are going with Carl and the corn. We knew we'd had a big windstorm, but, but I honestly never gave it any thought until I got here in the morning. And, and I just saw probably like, like half the corn was, was actually like lying down and it was folded over one another. And, and a lot of them, the, the reason that this one didn't make it is because when they crack, when they crack at the stem like this, then, then they're, not gonna, they're not gonna stand back up. Uh, we learn all these uh, trades of our, our ways, you know, from elders and stuff. So I get a, a lot of stories from different communities and uh, different people who farm as well. And, and the corn that you see here is our, uh, our first real plant that we're trying in our community here. Uh, again, we're trying to grow to help our community and, you know, so we don't have to resource out and go to different territories for corn. And that way we can learn to be self-sufficient ourselves in our own community. And growing our own food, we know where it's come from, we know what was in the soil, we know how it was prepared, who did it. I mean, right from the time it was the seed went into the ground, we've been involved with that process. So we know the food's gonna be good and it's gonna be healthy, and it's all done organically. Really what we're doing is preparing for years to come. And that beginning of focusing on getting that kind of sod, getting the grass, out of it and then adding more soil and adding nutrition. So I think we're in a, in, in a great spot. Um, we've already had some lessons, we're already laughing about the lessons. I'm more attached to the corn than I thought I was going to be. I, I kind of just saw it as a, as a project and, and I was thinking about food security and all these numbers and everything. And it's, I'm at a point now where if I don't get in here to water every couple of days, I actually miss the corn. I'll be, I'll be out with my family and we'll be doing the things that families do and I'll be thinking, I wonder how the corn's making out today. It seems really hot out. I wonder if it, you know, if it needs a little more water or, or if it rains, I'll be like, oh man, that corn's getting soaked. I hope that's not too much for the roots. Like it, I really find myself thinking about this corn a lot. The corn that we talk about, the white corn that makes our corn soup, our cornbread, uh, some of our ceremonial meals, uh, it has no GMOs. It's uh, been grown the same way, uh, nothing genetically modified to it. And uh, again, we've been cultivating it in the same way for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. It's like a kid, like that I feel like I have this responsibility to, to nurture this corn. And, and that I have to keep putting time into it and pay attention to it and, and sing songs and like even little stuff like trying not to swear on the corn. And there are all these things that, that it's just shifted my, my entire thinking about corn. corn. The corn is alive and I feel like I can feel it. So there, there was a point where the corn was so dense that I didn't know if it was gonna take or not, but it was just this week I came in and I started to see that, that they were starting to tassel. So, and that means that the, the corn is actually pollinated when, when this happens. So first we'll get these tassels and then the very next thing is that, is that there will be cobs that will be tucked underneath these leaves and then the cob is, the cob is what we get to eat. And Stories that some of the elders have always shared with me is, uh, you know, make sure that you plant enough not only for your community but uh, the animals surrounding that area. They're going to come and uh, have a little feast and harvest that uh, corn as well. So. Make sure you plant enough for the, for the animals, too. Wise words, Mr. Parker. It seems like there'll be enough corn to go around to share with everyone. I'm excited to see how the corn turns out in our next episode. 
Hmm. Pauline's fish must be getting close to being finished by now. Okay, so now we're gonna take the lid off and see how it turned out. It's looking very good. We're gonna take it out of our pan now. Gonna move it onto a clean plate. And we're gonna leave all of the juices and oil in the pan and we're gonna start our sauce. So since this is a lemon butter sauce, we're gonna add in about two to three tablespoons of butter. We're gonna add in our garlic as well. So we're just gonna brown up our garlic and our butter. We're gonna add a bit of our lemon juice. And most of our herbs. very easy a lemon butter sauce with garlic and parsley. Okay so now that our fish and our sauce is ready we're gonna move on to our salad. We're gonna be making a strawberry and spinach salad. Okay so we already have our spinach prepared. It's just in a bowl. I took some of the stems off of it just to make sure that it's mostly just the, the leaves of the spinach. And we're gonna slice up some strawberries. So strawberries are very um, important to our indigenous people because they're also a type of medicine. So when you cut open a strawberry, you can see on the inside that it kind of looks like a heart. Strawberries are heart medicines. They're very good. They're full of antioxidants and different kind of vitamins. And they're very good for, for people in general. And they're really good for heart health. Slicing them like this just to add them to the salad gives it a nice, full, hearty flavor. We're going to slice up this red onion and we're going to add to it just to add a little bit of color and a little bit of a zesty flavor. Now we're going to cut the onion in half and into a quarter. And we're going to cut the butt off and take the core out. The core of the onions is a little bit bitter, so adding it raw to things is not the best. You want the sweeter, more um, flavorful pieces on the outside than the bitter core that's on the inside. So we're just gonna slice some of it. We're gonna add our onions to our salad now. So now we're just gonna make our dressing. Just gonna grab a small bowl. We're gonna add in some olive oil, some balsamic vinegar, and some salt and pepper. And this will be our salad dressing. What an amazing job Pauline is doing with this dish. Mm, I can't wait to try it. So we're gonna be trying our lake trout with our spinach and strawberry salad. So Maggie, if you would like to give it a try. Oh, I, we'll which should I a, dig into first, the salad or the trout? Oh, I say the salad, always. The salad, oh. So we'll add the dressing. It smells absolutely amazing. So we have a balsamic olive oil dressing to go with it today. And what is in the salad? The salad has spinach, strawberries, and zesty red onions. Ooh, yum. Excuse me. A little bit of everything, right? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's delicious. The berries are nice and sweet, as with the onions and the balsamic, just gives it that nice little bite, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fabulous. And you use a light olive oil when you're using that? Yes, of course. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm. So now we it's have delicious. 
uh, lemon butter herb sauce for our mm -hmm. trout. It has garlic and a couple different herbs in it. Uh, some parsley, some basil, just a little bit of flavor to give to it. Some lemon juice and some butter. It smells amazing. Yep. I'm gonna take too big a piece. I need a little hanky for my eye. <laughs> oh my God, this is delicious. The herbs are not overbearing. They're just perfect. Um, I think this is one of probably the best trout I've had in a while. Oh, thank you. This is very, very good. Can I have some more? Yeah, of course. Oh my God, girl, you did good. <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. Pauline has outdone herself once again. I can't remember the last time I had trout that tasted that good. Join us in our next episode where Pauline shows us how to make a venison roast with a cranberry wild rice dish.